to attend and participate in have had as, as the overriding goal your success in school. We want to keep you here. Why do we want to keep you here? Because we're in the business of what money? All right, sure. We're in the business of providing a service to you all so that you can achieve your goals. This is just one step in your whole life, all right? And we're in the business of helping you to achieve that goal and to say goodbye. We don't want to see you here four years from now. Why? Because what? You're tired of us. <laughs> Not because we're tired of you. We want you to be able to achieve the goal, unless you're working part-time on your degree, all right? If you're going full-time, how long should you be here? About two years, three years if you're not going in the summertime and that sort of thing. We want to equip you with the skills that will help you succeed, help you to get past this specific goal in your life so that you can get on to bigger and better things. Because that's what you've got in mind, right? You want something bigger and better than what you previously would have been able to accomplish without a degree, right? The first activity that we're going to do today is to uh, divide up into groups and then we're going to consider a situation. I believe we'll just group by physical proximity. Is that all right? Can we do that? Okay, let's Groovy. do what? What? Groovy. Groovy. Ooh, I love that word. <laughs> Six letter word. Good one. Um, four people right here. You all work together, all right? And you three people. You three people. You four people. You, you three people. All right, and you two people. Is that all right? You two people. You two. You two. Okay. All right. What I want you to consider is Harry's situation. Not a Harry situation, but Harry, the name of a man. Harry's. That's possessive. Harry's situation. Harry's lifelong dream was to go to the North Pole, but alas, he died before he got there. Okay. During his life, he accumulated a great deal of material success. $15 million is what he accumulated by the end of his life. And yet he died unfulfilled. He didn't make it to the North Pole. All right? You, as separate groups, have all been left that $15 million. Okay? So this group was left $15 million. This group was left $15 million. And all the other groups. All of you have $15 million to spend. The one stipulation that Harry wanted you to realize or wanted you to recognize in your decision about how to spend that money that he left to you was that you should spend it on a trip because he didn't get to go to the North Pole like he always wished to. He wanted you to make the trip of your dreams. Okay? So within your group, I want you to decide how you're going to spend that money. $15 million. Remember that the person who give, gave it to you left dollars unfulfilled. He didn't get to go to the North Pole. All right, so I want you to consider in about maybe two or three minutes what you're going to do with the $15 million. Okay? Quick, quick. Yeah, it's not a group where you're going. What are we going to do? You guys might want to turn around so any three make eye contact at least as you're making this decision.
fail, right? If you, you're here obviously because you have a plan in mind, you have at least one plan in mind, and that is to finish this semester. You're here in this room with me because you, plan, you want to finish this particular course because it's required for graduation, and those are specific goals, and they're very short-term sorts of goals. We also want to deal today with long-term goals. Besides just the short-term goals, we want to talk about the long-term goals as well. Who determines, who determines your success in life? Yeah. You do. Or do you have some constraints on you? Those no? are like your handicaps. Those are like your handicaps. That's right. They're like your handicaps. Do you have some handicaps? I think all of us have some sort of sort of handicaps. Can we deal with them? Yeah. We can deal with them if we know the resources, if we know where we can go to remediate, remediate those handicaps. All right. How many of you all are afraid to speak in public? I'm raising my hand. I don't particularly like it. It's not something that I look forward to doing necessarily, to being on stage and that sort of thing. You realize that um, of the American people, public speaking is the greatest fear. You know what the second fear is? <coughs> Death. People are more afraid of speaking in public than they are afraid of dying. Is that easy for you to imagine? I'd rather die. <laughs> you would rather die than to speak in public. Right? If you know that that is a weakness of yours, if you know that that is a weakness of yours, and if your career goal is to be, for instance, a teacher, what do you have to do? You've got to get in front of people. And so you've got to overcome that handicap or that, that quality or attribute of who you are. Right? Are there resources out there that can help you with that specific thing? What are some resources? You know exactly what you're talking about. Planning. Good. All right. So you've got to plan. You've got to practice your material. What else Learn helps? To speak first. Learn to speak well first. Okay. What else? What are other resources? Take a speech class. Take a speech class. Good. All right. There's also a club called the Toastmasters Club that gives you practice in doing that. Before you get up to speech or to speak, what is it that you should do? Plan it. What else? Prepare. What? <laughs> don't, don't eat a bunch of really stinky things before you go. But you've got to plan. You've got to plan. And one way to plan effectively in sports psychology is to visualize your succeeding. Right? If you, uh, my brothers are all golfers. And one of them is especially good and, and got through college on a golf scholarship, right? And he um, visualized himself succeeding. He visualized the ball going into the hole. He visualized his tee shot. He imagined where it was going to be, and that helped him to get the power to get it there. If you're speaking in public, what should you imagine? What should you visualize in order to help you through the humps. That you're doing a good job. What you're saying, you visualize that you've done a good job. You hear the pitter patter of that happy audience that has gotten the message. You see yourself finished with the task. If you're writing a paper, what should you visualize? What you're saying? The big A at the top of it. It's all nicely done. It's all prepared. It's typewritten. It's it's looking good. And that A. Good. Right? And even the ultimate. Of everybody sitting in their underwear. Do what? Whatever happens to carry everybody sitting in their underwear. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's another thing. Because what does that do for you? It calms your nerves. It calms your nerves and it puts things in perspective. Really. Okay. And I promise I don't see you all sitting in your underwear. I'd be embarrassed Okay, so she'd be even you know more embarrassed. You don't need to take it off the okay. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about what goals are. What are goals? Because that's one of those kind of abstract sorts of concepts. And to define a goal is helpful in achieving it. You've got to know what you're working with. In order to have a goal, you've got to know what, in fact, a goal is. And this definition suggests that a goal is an ideal state of affairs that you value and are working to achieve. An ideal state of affairs that you value and are working to achieve.
achieve. Goals are based on wants, it's what you want to have, and what you need, necessity for survival. With your group right now, I want you to define the definition here. All right, let's break this down <coughs> into a couple of words. Let's, let's uh, define what value it means, things you value. Let's talk about working. What is work? This is, these are things I'm going to ask you to do in the group. Okay? Define value. Define what work means. Define what wants are. Like give examples of what wants are versus needs. All right, so there are four things that I want you to define in your group. And then we're going to talk about those things. What is a value? Or what are things that you value? That's what, a group idea. This is a group. Come up with some ideas, right? And what is work? What does that mean to work, to achieve? What are wants and what are needs? Okay? So get with your group right now and come up with some definitions. And I see some of you writing those terms down, and that's good because that will help to focus your group. A couple minutes. <laughs> room here. And talk about value. Hey, we didn't do that yet. Oh, that's right. Okay, we're in there right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have an example in mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you have to, if you 
had to go 20 miles to school on a daily basis, <coughs> you might want a new car. What do you need? Gas. Transportation. Right. Or gas. You need, you need a dependable car. But it doesn't necessarily have to be new. Yeah. All right, there's a difference between... You don't have to have a vehicle because you need to work, so therefore you need a bicycle to work. <laughs> it's better you can commute. But, okay, so, but what are you trading off here? If you're, if you're doing a bicycle thing, if you're going to do the 20-mile trip on a bicycle, what are you trading off? Your time. Okay, so every decision that you make, almost, is a trade-off. You have to decide among, among several different alternatives. And so if you, yeah, it might be nice because you could accomplish the goal of staying fit, staying very healthy by riding a bike 20 miles to, to school every day, but you're also losing out on some valuable time. You save money on gas. Save money on gas, which is also one of your goals or one of the obstacles to, to your success is having to spend as much money, all right, as you're having to spend. <coughs> Don't you think you're worth more than $5 an hour? I know I am. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, how many of you all know uh, or have heard of Stephen Covey? Or Covey, or, or I think it's Covey. He wrote, he wrote the, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. How many of you are in business? In business. Okay, well, he's, he's quite the business guru now, all right? And he has written this book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of his principles, one of the seven habits, is to begin with the end in mind. All right, begin with the end in mind. What does that mean? Just that that sentence, begin with the end in mind. Think about what you want it to what you end up like. What, what you want. Okay, think about what you want to end up like. Think about what else? What'd you say? Okay, same thing, a little bit different. Okay, just a little bit different. All right, begin with the end in mind. At 85 years old, Maybe that's our end. Harry died much sooner than that. But at 85 years old, what is it that we want to have accomplished in our lives? Have you thought about that? About being 85 and being able to look back upon your life and say, I am pleased that I have accomplished this, this, and this. And at 85, what are you going to regret not having accomplished? That's a good framework for establishing long-term goals. What do you mean? That's what she's saying. That's what I'm saying. In order to get, in order to accomplish the things that you want to have accomplished by the end of your life, you need to have planned for them. You need to re realize that at some point you are going to be 85, all right? And you need to have worked those sorts of goals into your life plan, all right? Begin with the end in mind is what Stephen Covey says, is one of the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, think about a car trip to Maine, all right? You've got two weeks, and this is another thing I'm going to have you do. Well, we'll just talk about this one individually. Um, you've got two weeks. It's your summer, summer break. And your ideal vacation has always been to spend those two weeks or spend that time getting to Maine and coming back home. All right? You've got two weeks, so you've got a limit there in terms of the, the amount of time that you can spend. Two weeks, and you've got a car trip because you're not going to fly. You're going to drive out to Maine. You can't afford the, the, the uh, ticket. I want you to consider that two-week vacation and think of how to get there. All right? Your goal, then, is what? To make it. To, to make it, to get to make it back in the two weeks. Right. Okay? So you're beginning with the end in mind. What do you have to consider in order to accomplish this journey successfully within those two weeks? How far it is on the train, how long it's going to take. How long it's going to take. How far away it is. How much money you need. All right? What are the resources? How do you... How do you, uh, what resources can you utilize in making this trip a success? An atlas, get a map, what else? Triple A. Triple A, all right. Hire, hire the professionals to do the trip planning for you. Yeah, but you can afford that. Well, Triple A is what, $35 a year. Let's say you're members of Triple A, okay. Um, 
What else do you have to have to plan for? What might happen on the way out no, there? Right down your car. Your car might break down. So how do you plan for that? Insurance. You get insurance. All right. You have your car. You have you your car check up. Do you a checkup on your car. Just to plan for the unexpected along the way, because the unexpected more than likely will happen. No, right? no, you, you take a, a mechanic car. with you. Take a mechanic with you. you rent a car. Rent a car. That expense may be worth it. I don't know. I wouldn't have been miles of my truck. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's take a look um, right now at the, hand, at the handout that we've got for today. Okay? Take one of these and pass it around. Okay. And right now, go ahead and sign up. Sign that you was here. Right? Is that a realistic goal for me? 
I'm a teacher. No, it's not a realistic goal. That's not going to happen in my lifetime. And as long as I stay in education, that's not going to happen. All right? As long as I stay in the classroom, that's not going to happen. So that's not a realistic goal. And if that's what my goal is, and if that's how I live my life, am I ever going to be happy? No, because I'm not realizing a major goal in my life. Right? So in... It's your goal to be to help others. Okay, that's right. And that's what that's where the balancing comes in. Sure, I'd like to make more money, but the goal my goal is not <coughs> to make money, or I none of the people in education here are in it to make money. Right? They have another goal in mind. And hopefully it is to help people. Right? Or to help other people be successful. Help other people make more money than they want. What do you think about that? But but that's the uh, that's the balancing act. And you've got to have several different goals. And if you rely solely on a financial goal, you may be disappointed. In the same way, is it realistic for me to, with my skills, to expect to complete medical school, for instance, by the time I'm 40 and I'm 34? No, probably not. No, because I don't really have the inclination to do so. Uh, but that's not where my skills are. If, if you don't love chemistry or if you can't handle chemistry, is it realistic to assume that you're going to be a medical doctor? No, I don't think so. All right, so, so your goals should be realistic. They should also be specific. What does that mean? Okay. Okay, what you have time and can accomplish, they need to be somewhat measurable, all right? Specific uh, means that they can you, can you have a goal like, I want to be happy when I grow up? It's, okay, not only is it cheesy, is it, is it attainable to be happy? Is it attainable? Anybody. Yeah, okay, anybody can be happy. But is happy a specific goal? I mean, no, because you, there aren't any <coughs> steps to getting there. Unless you, unless you create happy as your overriding goal and you define some real specific, concrete goals underneath that happy thing. I mean, in order for me to be happy, I might say, I've got to have two cars that run, a <laughs> husband, and a great job. A husband that works. Okay. A husband that works. You want to be more specific than that. Okay, so, so here we're getting to levels of specificity. And uh, the more specific you are, the more able you are going to be to meet that goal. What about reflecting a variety of interests? Why, did, why should goals reflect a variety of interests? You're probably not going to be doing the same thing all your life. You're not going to be doing the same thing all your life. All right? And so we've divided goal setting into two, two categories, personal goals and professional goals or career goals. All right? The, uh, depending on who you are, you may have more goals in the career area <coughs> than you do in the personal area. And what's that going to mean in terms of the time that you spend? Where are you going to spend most of your time if most of your goals are in the career area? In your career. In your career. What's going to suffer? Personal your personal life. life. Okay. And vice versa. If you spend a lot of time on your personal goals, your personal goals having to do with family and friends and hobbies and those sorts of things, it, your professional goals may suffer. <coughs> right? And so, so that's why life is, is an art. It's a balancing act. And especially those of you who are working and going to school, I'm working and going to school, those sorts of things, you have to be able to make decisions. And your decisions can be guided by the specific goals that you set. And if my goal is to get a doctorate within the six-year period that I'm allowed to do so, then what's going to suffer? Because I've got a full-time job, too. What's going to suffer? My personal life, my family life. Right? And that's something I have to recognize with and be satisfied with in order to, to maintain that same goal. Three years from now, if I'm married and have two kids, can, am I allowed to change my goals? Yes. Yeah. Circumstances have intervened. Right? And so your goals shouldn't necessarily be chiseled in stone like the last one. Because if they are chiseled in stone, and if you maintain the same sets of goals the enti your entire life through, what are you apt to do? Burn out. You may burn out. 
Do you have the same goals that you had when you were 12 years old? I hope you're <laughs> no, I hope not. Kind of. Okay? <laughs> kind of. And some of us do maintain the same sets of goals our whole life through. But they shouldn't be chiseled in stone because what if you achieve those goals, the goals that you set for yourself at 12, and you've achieved those goals, then what is, what is there? What's next? Move on to new ones. All right. So once you've accomplished a certain set of goals, recognize that it's that it's okay to, to establish a new set of goals. Or if circumstances intervene that prevent you from achieving a, a certain goal, then it's all right to readjust and reevaluate. What does this number seven mean? Mirror the real you. Goals should mirror the real you. Don't try to be someone you're not. Okay. Why? Because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not. What does it do to you? It won't make you happy. It won't make you happy. Make you feel insecure. Make you feel insecure. And so the match between your goals and who you are is a very important one to make. Um, the, our campus has a, a real neat profiling system, a career profiling system that evaluates you in four areas and tells you kind of who you are and what you'd be suited for. You can't expect to be a, a CEO of a corporation but not be able to stand working inside, right? If you are a person who is an outside person, you can't expect to change who you are to accommodate your goals. You can, but you're going to be giving up something, right? So, so when you make your goals, it's important to understand who you are. And that's where we get into a lot of difficulty, because many of us don't know who we are and what's important to us and what we value and what we're good at. If you're in a quandary about that, I would suggest that you go to the, the assessment center, the multiplex, where they've got the career profile uh, tool that takes about two hours of your time. Right? You don't want to end up in a career that's not suited to who you are. Um, be a pleasure to pursue. But I thought goals were hard work. It has to be hard work, but you have to have fun to do them. You have to have fun to do them along the way. What happens if, if it's all just a big grind? You lose interest, you're more likely to quit. Um, <coughs> some people will think that as a challenge, you're going to pursue it harder. Okay, and it's important to know, to know the sort of personality that you are. Um, it's got to be something, your long-term goals need to be something that you enjoy somewhat. Okay? Um, if working on a doctorate to me is a big bore and all the classes, are boring and have no relevance whatsoever to what I do or to what I value or to what I love, am I going to stick with it? Probably not, because unless I'm willing to jump through the hoops just to get the doctor behind my name or in front of my name. And some people are willing to do that. But if it's not a pleasure to pursue, you're giving up, you're sacrificing an awful lot of time and effort and emotional energy doing things that you don't like to do. And life is short. How many of you know people who uh, live their whole life for retirement? And after a month of retirement, they have a heart attack and die. Well, what a shame that is. <coughs> and I've known several people who think that's happened. You live your whole life thinking, then I'll be happy. When I can retire, then I'll be happy. Or when I get my degree, then I'll be happy. When I have a husband, then I'll be happy. What happens if you live your life just for those goals, those pinnacles. Yeah. What? It happens. It does happen. Lots of people live their lives that way. What are they missing out on? Yeah. Being happy during the moment. Um, some literature suggests that it's not caught a goal at the, at the end of the rainbow. It's going through the rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's there really isn't any goal at the end. Okay. Good. Um, why don't you, keeping these eight points in mind, why don't you go ahead and list your life's personal goals and your life's <coughs> career goals. The number that you write is up to you. I want you to be totally honest because this isn't something that's going to be picked up. This portion of the packet isn't going to be picked up. So spend about five minutes listing your goals, your personal goals and your professional goals our work, and they require time, self-evaluation, an understanding of who you are and what you want, 
but it, it but it is work. It, it takes your time. But in order to get someplace, you've got to plan to get there, right? So the time is well worth it. A uh, few people find opportunities because it's disguised as hard work, and fewer and fewer of us are willing to work hard. Uh, you've heard of the eroding work ethic of the American people. And that's what that's about. On the next page. You've got, the, you've listed your personal goals and your career goals, right? On the next page, you've got resources and obstacles, right? What do, what do we mean when we talk about resources? Think, for instance, about how, you're gonna how you're going to do it. What, if, you, if you think about your uh, career here, right, or your mission or your goal to complete your education here, what are your resources? Well, specifically, though, that's your goal. What? Classes. Your specific classes. Can you be even more specific than that? Uh, medical terminology classes. Okay. Medical now, those are going to serve as your resources, right? Specific classes and the information that you can gain from those classes. What are other resources that you are going to need in order to accomplish your goal? Yeah, you need money. Okay. Clearly, you need money because you're foregoing the income that your friends are out there making, is that correct? Right? And that's the mark of a mature individual, so the ability to be able to forego the instant sort of pleasure for that long-term gain. Right? You should be applauded for, for being here because you're sacrificing something right now in order to get something <coughs> Right? So one, other, one resource is money. You've got to have money. You've got to have the financial means in order to accomplish the goal. And what are some of your resources for financial help? Grants. Grants. Loans. Mom and dad. Loans. Loans. Work. Part-time work. Or summer work. Right. Long and short-term loans. You know that you can borrow money within your department. You can go to your department and get short-term loans. Right. I think it's thirty or forty dollars is the maximum that you can get, and you have to be in good standing. Right, but you can go and get loans in that way. You've got a financial aid department here on campus, federal work study programs that allow you to complete your goal. That's one of the resources on campus. What are other resources on campus? Academic resources. Computers. Okay, computer lab facilities. All right, those are going to aid in your efficiency as a student. Right? We have a skill center on campus to remediate some of, some of the areas <coughs> of concern in your academic abilities and also to enrich your abilities. What are other resources on campus that you need to keep in mind within your department? Who are some resources? Hmm. Your instructors? How are they going to be a resource to you? How can they benefit you besides teaching the class? If you have problems, you can go to them. Okay. They can help you with personal problems. They can help you with academic problems. Help you find a job. They can help you find a job. They can serve as references. They can write you letters of recommendation. And you're going to need those. Someone to look up to. Someone to look up to. And, and often you may find a mentor on campus. Someone that you can visit with along the, along the different steps of your way here. Right? Um, before you ever decide to abandon your goal of an education here, please talk to somebody who may be able to direct you to an alternate plan. If you're absolutely out of money, if you've had a financial setback, if something has happened in your life that, is, that it looks like you have to drop out of school, please <coughs> talk to somebody here on campus, an instructor, your department head, a counselor on campus, talk to anybody and see if they can offer you some alternatives. Because you're making a very short-term decision to drop out of school, and you're eliminating lots of your long-term goals <coughs> by doing so. Right? So, so be sure that you checked with us to see if there are some resources <coughs> that you're not aware of before you abandon the goal of completing your education here. Obstacles. What are obstacles? Things that stand in your way. Okay. For example. Or pass a medical terminology class. Okay, passing an immediate class, right. You, I mean, you are, one of your obstacles to, I guess it could be looked at as an obstacle, though that's kind of a negative 
you. But one of the obstacles that you're trying to get through is this particular two hour block, right? Exactly. Okay. Your four, your four hour block? Two, two hours. hours. Two I hope hours it's just you had to what? You had to wait two hours to come in here. Oh, you had to wait two hours yeah. to come in here? Watch. Oh, okay. But I hope you made use of that time. Study? We did. Okay. <laughs> made good use of like fly product. Okay. Um, obstacles are going through the motions, sitting through the classes. And what and, and some of your short-term goals in order to get a job, in order to get the job that you want, you've got to maintain a competitive edge. And so you may want, and may have as one of your uh, professional goals or your personal goals to graduate with a three-point. All right? What are obstacles in the way of your achieving that goal? What? A specific class that you've heard is a band, the Godzilla class. What else? Tests. Tests. Okay. And so you've got to recognize that you've got those obstacles coming up in order to deal with them because that helps you to plan. If you recognize that you've got a test in that Godzilla class, what do you have to do? Study. You have to study. What else? What are you giving up? Time. You're giving up time. You're giving up an evening at the lake, an afternoon at the lake. You're giving up socializing with your friends. You're giving up Seinfeld tonight. This is a Northern exposure. Monday night. Nothing but time in the big O. I know. I've lived here for a long work. time. That's right. I don't see why people say that because I am just, I never have time to do anything that I want. It's always just running. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, mm-hmm. Now, I don't think I've ever been bored in my life. I haven't been bored in the past few months. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so obstacles. So what I want you to do then is to take a look back at your lifetime goals and your your personal goals and your career goals, and then I want you to list the resources that you've got in each of those areas, and then the obstacles in the way of your achieving those goals in each of those areas on that second sheet of paper. Resources for that. No. No, we're going to mow them around the world five times. <laughs> Water logging. Well, eight or two. <laughs> to uh, achieving your goals, right? You have set some goals for yourself personally and professionally or career wise, <coughs> and now you've listed obstacles because it's clear that you're going to encounter obstacles along, along the path to achieving your goals. You've also got resources that you can turn to when you meet those obstacles, right? This 10-step approach is designed to help you achieve the goals. First of all, it says identify your values. Identify your values. What does that mean? Identify your values. And what's that got to do with some of the things that we've talked about? What's most important to you? You've got to find out what's important to you. That's very good. You all are thinking along the same lines. It's kind of frightening, isn't it? human beings do that. But you've got to identify your values because your goals have to match your values to some degree, right? Because otherwise you're not going to achieve them. If uh, if you don't value a college education, then what are you going to do? And one of your goals is to get this college education. What's going to happen? You're not going to get it, okay? And you've got to be willing to put forth the time and, and sacrifice an awful lot in order to achieve those more challenging goals. So you've got to have your identi- uh, uh, your values identified. Set the exact goal that you wish to achieve. It should be measurable. It should be specific so that you'll know when you've gotten there. Uh, identify alternatives. What does that mean? Identify alternatives. Have have several different plans in mind. And when I when I mentioned the resources that are available on campus and the people available on campus for you to talk to, those are alternatives and those people can provide you alternatives when you think that the only thing that you can do is drop out of school or drop a specific class, all right? Because anytime you drop a class, what are you doing? You're setting yourself back and you're going to have to reevaluate the time that you're, that you're going to achieve your goal in, all right? When you make a decision about skipping a class, what are you doing? You guys probably have never made that decision. 
Have you have you ever made that decision to miss a class? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and what are you doing in a sense when you when you make a decision to skip a class? Studying for a test. Okay. You may be studying for another test, but what's going to happen with <coughs> the material that was covered during that class? You fall behind in that class, and so you're constantly juggling back and forth to try to get back on track. Or maybe you didn't study for the test in that class. Or maybe you didn't study for the, the test in that class, and so are you gaining any time with that? <coughs> okay, if, if a makeup test is allowed. Okay. Right. Um, exact objectives, pinpointing exact objectives. What, is that, what does that have to do with when you're pinpointing exact objectives? Remember on the first day of class when, when instructors passed out the syllabus that listed the specific objectives that you were supposed to cover during the course? What you're going to learn. Okay, it's what you're going to learn. And it's got to be, to some degree, measurable. So they've got to be exact objectives. Objectives are goals. Um, identify intermediate objectives. Why do you want to have intermediate objectives? If you have a long-term goal, if you have a, a goal of completing a specific course so build stuff. with, a, okay, if you have a specific course that you want to complete with a B average, and what are your checkpoints along the way? How do you measure whether you're you're still on track with the goal? Grades okay, if your grades are on B's at midterm, you get a report that tells you what your goal, what your grade is, and you measure that according to what specific goal it is that you had. So intermediate or halfway through, I want to have thus and so, all right? Uh, you may want to have an A by midterm because you know sometimes the courses get harder because they go, yeah, as they if, you got an a, if you already got an A, then you start slacking off. Then, you, well, can you afford to slack off? Sometimes. Sometimes you can. And sometimes it's wise to do that. When is it wise to do that? When you're overstressed, when you're overstressed or when you're when you have uh, say say English class is real difficult for you, but another class, but math is real easy for you. Where should you be spending your time? In English. In English. Okay. So so again, it's that balancing thing. Uh, determine the cost in time, effort, and sacrifice because it's important to recognize up front that there are going to be some sacrifices in order in order for you to accomplish your goal. Um, if the cost is too high. And you haven't assessed it properly. What's going to happen? Dad has to sell salt. What? Your dad has to sell salt. He used that excuse on the last week. Okay. Okay. What do you have to do if you if a, if something becomes too expensive in time and energy? You have to slack off. You have to cut cut back, and you have to reassess and decide is this goal really worth it compared to the other things that I'm giving up. Okay. Organize your plan step by step. Fill in the small print. That means on a day-to-day -day basis, if your goal is to get a, a B in this class, what do you have to do every day? If it's a difficult class for you, if your skill level isn't where maybe it ought to be, you have to day by day make a concerted effort to achieve that goal. It's got to be divided up into very small segments. First of all, you've got to do what? Come to class. Second of all, do what? Study. What does that mean, study? That's a, just a real easy resource. Okay, check your sources out. Read, comprehend. What else? What does study mean? Prepare yourself for a test. Memorize, prepare yourself for a test. Conference with an instructor. What else? What'd you say? What'd you say? Concentrate. Concentrate. Yeah, and that's one of the hardest things to do. One of the hardest things to do. Identify your control points. What are control points? <coughs> what does that mean? What is control? Whether you can control whether you make a B or an A. Okay. Whether you make a B or an A, what does control have to do with it? If I don't study, then I'm not going to make an A. Okay, so you're, so you're talking about self-discipline. You've got to be disciplined enough. You've got to be in control of what you do. All right. In order to accomplish a long-term objective, reevaluate your plan achievements today against your overall master plan frequently. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to check back and, and take a look at these goals every now and then? See if you're on track. Okay. And see what what 
things you've accomplished. How many of you are list makers? How many of you write lists? I'm kind of compulsive about it. Okay. Does it give you a great deal of satisfaction to be able to mark something off a list? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it give you a great deal of satisfaction to look at your transcript and see that you're halfway finished? To see all the courses that you've already completed? Okay. Sometimes we need that sort of a reward. We need to be able to see that we have, in fact, accomplished a good portion of our goal. So reevaluating <coughs> is very important. We also need to recognize that we change as we grow older. All right? And so to stick with the same goals at 30 that we had at 20 may not be appropriate because we've got different, we're looking at life through a different set of eyes than we did when we were 20, or I hope we are. Okay? Look at the next page. The next page is on self-assessment. That's one of the first things that you need to do is to understand who you are. The roles that I play, because all of us play several different roles in life. We are mothers, we are sisters, we are brothers, we are students, we are teachers, we are daughters, we are several different things. We are friends, we are significant others, we are husbands, we are wives. I want you to list the roles that you play in your life. We're employees. List all the different roles that you play in your life. Relationships. Look at what they've been like or the ones that you're involved in right now, the personal relationships that you have right now. Assess them. Evaluate them. What do you get out of them? And what must you give to them? Okay. For that section. What do you get out of your relationships? Because all of those roles that you play are relationships. Can you just put this at the side? The last two, assessment of my financial situation. Describe your financial situation. How? Because financial, your financial situation impacts your ability to achieve your career goal here or, or your degree goal here. What is your financial situation? And if you don't come back and revisit that every now and then, you may find yourself short at some point. All right? And your current level of knowledge and skill. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses academically?
goals. These are the things that you wanted to have accomplished by the time you were 85, for instance. Right? In order to make those goals feasible, in order to make them something that you can accomplish, it's useful to divide them up <coughs> into shorter term goals. And that's what the next page has to do with. It says list your personal goals that you'll achieve in the next five years. One of those should be completion of your degree here. Okay? If that in fact is your goal. Personal goals and then career goals. Now these are specifically the ways that you hope to get your long-term goal. If, you're, if your personal goal is to have a house on the hill, you've got to pay for it. You've got to buy the land, you've got to build the house, you've got to do several things in the interim. You've got to have the finances in order to do so. How do you get the finances? What sort of a job is it that you're going to be, be uh, involved in? goals, put them in most to least important order. You can only have one. What's the most important one? These are the five-year goals. The five-year goals. Okay? Prioritize them. Put numbers beside them. Put numbers beside them. And we're working with the five-year goals now. What's the most important thing that you do? The next to the most important thing that you do? That's hard to do. You have to get, you have to, you've got to prioritize. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. But at least you're ranking them. At least you're ranking them. Okay? label them short term and long term. Within the five years, <laughs> that's going to be a long term goal. A short term goal, and if you don't have any short term goals, you need to develop some short term goals. Because those are the things that can help keep you on track. What is the specific thing that you need to do now in order to get your degree in a year and a half, for instance? Okay? That would be short term versus long term. Because this is part, this is the part of the activity that you're going to have to turn in to your advisor. Okay, that short-term and long-term goal. Okay. After you've done that, put a date beside each of those goals. Give me a specific date at which you, uh, by which you hope to have accomplished that specific goal. And if you've done your goals properly, if they're specific enough, if they're objective enough, then you'll be able to put a date by it. Because you probably know when you're going to graduate. You probably know if you've been specific enough about getting uh, a home, what date you should have a home by. A mate might be a different story. That may not be something that you can put a date on. As you make those considerations, look at the next page and list the resources for your personal goals and career goals and the obstacles in the way because it's important to recognize the, the places that you can go for help, the people to whom you can go for help, as well as it's important to recognize that you're going to run into trouble spots. What are the obstacles? What are, the, what are going to be the things that are going to prevent your attaining those five-year goals? That Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. They're taking that test evaluating um, who you are and how you stand with regards to those seven habits. All right, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Go ahead and complete that. On category four and category five, this self-scoring thing. Category four is your score on beginning with the end in mind. That's one of uh, Cody's principles, one of the set of habits, beginning with the end in mind, which is the whole idea about planning and goal setting. Where were you on that? What'd you get? Huh? 
16, and there were how many possible? 18. So you're very high in that area. Okay, so you're a good planner. Okay, good organizer. You're, you're beginning with the end in mind. What about putting first things first, prioritizing? Well, out of the out of how many 18? 18. <coughs> okay. That's still fairly high. And putting first things first is often a difficult thing to do when you've got a lot of different holes on your time. Two dangers in goal setting, in prioritizing, in beginning with the end in mind, is spending so much time planning that you never get around to taking any action. Right? That's easy to do because we can feel successful at planning but not be able to carry, it, carry the plans out. Number two, plunging into activity before taking enough time to plan thoroughly. How many of you, which one of these dangers are you, are, are most similar to who you are? How many of you spend too much time planning and not getting around to the actual task itself? That's kind of, that's me. And uh, number two, who just jumps right in without planning enough, okay? And that's easy to do as well. Um, and, and people like that tend to recognize the value of planning but find it difficult to go ahead and do that. We're geared one way or the other. Three fears. Three fears in living a life. We're afraid of failing. That has to do with uh, you know, the idea about public speaking. We don't like to speak publicly in front of a great deal of people because then our failures are right out there for everybody to see. Right? So we're afraid of failing. <coughs> How are we afraid of success? What does that mean to be afraid of success? <coughs> afraid of what it might do to you? Okay. When you're successful, what, how many of you know very <coughs> successful uh, people, successful in a financial sort of way, but who are unhappy? He's Okay, he's not unhappy. But you know, some people who are very unhappy with their financial success, they have all the things that we might like to have, but still aren't happy. Like some people that are just grumpy. Grumpy, cranky, yeah. And sometimes we're afraid of succeeding because it's foreign to us. We've never succeeded before. It's something we don't know about, and we tend to fear things that we don't know anything about. Right, and so we repeat patterns, repeat activities that have made us fail before because we're afraid of, of the unknown, of what it feels like to succeed. And how does fear of conflict enter in to goal setting and planning? How does that enter in, fear of conflict? What is conflict? Two things where two people don't agree. Okay, good. And how can goal setting cause conflict? If you have some specific goals, okay, if you have some specific goals and one of your goals is this mate, but his goals don't coincide with yours, there is going to be some conflict. And, and that, there, there lies the art of compromising. If you want to live on the East Coast and your mate wants to live on the West Coast, is a good compromise Sepulpa, Oklahoma? <laughs> Not really. Nobody wins there. Nobody wins there, right? And conflict results from um, trying to share a life with somebody who has different sets of goals than we do, right? So it's important to know your goals and stick to them to some degree. <coughs> We're afraid of conflict because that keeps us from getting what we want. Share Bono. You know Share. Cher Bono said once, enjoy life. This is not a dress rehearsal, right? And in order to achieve your goals, the goals that you want to achieve in this lifetime, it's important to recognize that this day is very important in determining what, whether or not you're going to get there. And you're not going to get a second chance at it, right? Everybody's got the same set of 24 hours. Everybody's got the same day today. This is your life and you're not going to get a second chance at it. You're in control of your life. If you feel like you're not in control of your life, you probably need to talk to somebody to help get it back because nobody else owns it. It's yours. 
and the time that you have is yours today is yours too. How you spend today will determine how you spend tomorrow and every tomorrow of the rest of your life. These little things along the, along the path can turn into big things later. Okay, let's, um, right now let's be sure that you know where you're going from here, all right? I'm going to I'm going to stamp your passport in just a few minutes for this fourth one. Go ahead and write the date on there, 93093, and I'll validate it with the Bravo stamp. The next unit is your destination automation, all right? Now that's one that you're going to complete on your own, but it's due when? Next Thursday. Next, I think it's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's due next Friday, but you've got to do that on your own. And where do you get started with that? You know where you get started with that? It's, it's in the LRC. Let me check, check here real quickly to be sure that I'm telling you the right thing here. So if you got an hour, it would do you any good going. Yes, it would, because they're, it's, they're little segments. Okay, they're little segments. Um, unit 5, you will pick up at the LRC. You know where the LRC is? That's one of your resources on campus, all right? You pick that up, the LRC, it's, do you know where Viscom is? The Viscom building is? Or the bakery? Or the, yes, it's, it's right next to there. It's kind of in the same building, okay? Uh, the LRC, you need to go there to pick up the materials for Unit 5. And then when you finish Unit 5, you're going to take those materials back to the circulation desk. If, if you have missed any of the sessions, you need to check at the circulation desk as well to make up those uh, activities that you've missed. Um, for Unit 6, look at the last sheet of your handout here. Unit 6, the last sheet <coughs> of the student packet, this yellow sheet. Unit 6 is your enrollment and visit with your advisor for next semester. Right? And this yellow sheet needs to be completed before you go sit down with your advisor. All right? And this says complete this assignment sheet and submit it to your advisor or departmental representative in Unit 6 by mid-semester. That's in two weeks. All right? And it says list long-term career goals in priority order. Beside each goal, write your strategy for accomplishing the goal. That is, how is it that you, what steps are you going to take in order to reach that goal? Okay? So have this filled out before you sit down with your advisor, because that's you will turn that into your advisor, or either they're, they're going to be wanting to see that. Any questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. You're ready. You've been ready since 1:30. You're ready. ready.